A detail we've done a lot in our previous projects is we've always lit up our shower niche. Uh, and we've done that by piecemealing products together and a question always comes up as to how we waterproof it. Well, Schluter's actually solved that with their lighted niche product. I'm here with Kelby from Schluter. Uh, and, and we're gonna highlight three products that are in market now that are being showcased here at the International Builder Show. Yeah, so our first product is our lighted niche. Technically, it's Lipratech, which stands for Lighted Profile Technology. And so what it is, is it's three waterproof pre-manufactured niches, so 12 inches wide, 12 inches tall, 20 inches tall, or 28 inches tall, that come with an LED light that is in a silicone diffuser. It's a nice, clean 3000K light that's over 96% on the CFI color scale, so it's really pure white. It doesn't change the color of your tile or your grout. If you stick your hand in there, it's still the flesh color. Uh, what really makes it work well is if we look right over here at one of these boxes, it integrates a UL approved junction box from the factory that's approved. It meets 2023 North American Electrical Code and UL listing. So that's really what gets us in the game to be able to have a fully waterproof yeah. and electrically certified box with all the pieces and components that you need. So you get the, the niche, you get the channel body or the Deco SG to hold it and actually a silicone, as I mentioned, a silicone diffused LED light that's fully waterproof, has an easy connection. There's a 24 volt in wall fire rated low voltage wire. It doesn't need conduit. It can run just like a piece of Romex. And then there's a couple different driver options depending on the needs you have. The driver options are the first one is this all in one. So this gives you a on off dimmer switch and a 24 volt driver in a single uh, gang junction box. There's actually so a- there's no need for an auxiliary driver. Right, in this with this one, this will control up to two of these lights in one shower, can okay. power two, and it gives you just a simple plug and play. There's actually a plastic blade that connects to this so that it physically divides the high voltage and low voltage in the box for yep. the inspection. So this is a simple plug and play option. Then this option is a little more custom, the larger driver, so this can actually power up to six of these. So if you want to run multiple niches in a large shower, you can have six sets of lights. This one also physically divides the low voltage and the high voltage. It has the step down transformer. But the nice thing with this one is you're not limited to that, the, just the dimmer switch. You can have your own switch that matches the rest of the switches in your home. Got it, yeah. You could add a smart switch. You could even work with uh, switch manufacturers and maybe get one that has a motion detector or proximity switch, and that could turn into a night light in the bathroom as you walk in. So, so this, this gives you a lot more customized. Gives you yeah, full options, control. Right. You just need to mount this in an accessible area, like sure. in a closet or under a vanity, right. somewhere that the electrician can hook, his, hook it up and it could be accessed, but not buried in a wall or in a hot attic or something like that. Sure. So Kelly, let me, let me stop you for a moment. So yes. we've done this in the past um, differently. Yes. And what we've done is we've used the aluminum channel. We've actually installed it in a niche like this. We don't have the, the junction box. Let me guess, drilled a little hole. We drilled a little hole in the corner. Yeah. We do use the the the, uh, the curdy fix, yeah. so it is waterproof heading out. Uh, but the question has come up a lot, especially when we share a detail like that on social media, is like, well, how are you making this waterproof? Right. And you know, we didn't really have a great answer. And you know, there is a plastic diffuser. We'll add silicone to it. But it it was one of those things where it worked. But we were always, you know, wondering how long is it going to work for? Right. And silicone I think, has a shelf life, right? Exactly. And I think one of the really uh, cool things about this is exactly what you said: that it's silicone encased LED, yes. and that I mean completely protects the lighting uh, element in this. And you know, and I love the fact that this is just a, a Deco SG, which we use constantly Absolutely. for our in-wall glass channel and things like that. And then, of course, then all of the connections, you know, being in a UL list box. I mean, it, it prevents that issue where, you know, is that, a, is that an approved method? Is it going to pass inspection? Uh, and is it safe? Right, and what really makes this work is the 24 volt wire yeah. actually has a waterproof gland as the connector that snaps in physically into here and has a neoprene O-ring. And so that's really where the waterproofing and the electrical come together. So we've talked from here out. Let's talk from here in. Sure. So in terms of the, the channel itself, the lengths of them, yeah. you know, this is great that you have a, a, a standard niche. What if I build a niche that's eight feet long? 
Well, I would tell you on that, you need to stay tuned. Okay. Oh. You know, there's always things in development version in the two. future. Sure. Yeah, maybe version two, maybe version three. Okay. But yeah. I would say stay tuned and look for things maybe later this year. What else do we have going on at the show here? Well, now we have a couple of new products on the other side. Let's we have our drain, a new drain and our new uh, Dietra Heat membrane. So I want to talk about the drain first because what we've done in the past, typically use the Curdy line drain. One of our standard operating procedures for our all of our projects is when we're framing the house, we are ordering drains. Right. And the reason that we're ordering those drains is because we want that shower to be sized appropriately. So that drain fits in intentionally. Intentionally is a big thing in, in my world. Right. I want everything to look as though it was thought through. Uh, and, and truthfully, years ago, we would order the drain and it would be slightly smaller and you'd have this sliver of tile. Exactly. And my team always came to me and said, you know, well, why are we ordering the drain so far in advance? Like, why does it matter? Why can't we just cut the drain? And you can't, not on the Curdy line. Right but now you have that option. We call it Varia, so that's a play on the word variable. Sure. But this gives us four new patterns in two sizes. So you don't have nearly as many part numbers or sizes to deal with. You have a four foot and an eight foot. Okay. And then the, what's, the beauty of this is the contractor is actually cutting this to fit on the job site after the wall tile is laid. So you get a true wall to wall connection. Sure. It even includes a small compression end cap because it's a job site cut, right? Most contractors aren't going to have a really high quality stainless steel cutoff saw. They're going to have a variable. Some might. They're probably going to have a variable speed grinder with yeah. the right blade or maybe a port of band or something like that. That little end cap is going to cover that cut edge and hide the burrs. Yep. If it's slightly blues because they cut it too fast, it'll hide that and it's a compression fit. So it's one and done. Yep. You're actually cutting the drain grate and the channel body that's part of it at one time to get it to be the exact same fit. The drain grate still has a removal tool so that you can lift it and clean it out for maintenance. What really makes this thing uh, tick is if you notice, the opening inside is about six inches. Yep. And that's where the water goes into a polypropylene drain flange. So let, me, let me pause yes. you there. That, that's six inches, so different from the Curdy line, just that two inch outlet. It resembles a, like a funnel almost. And then that comes in the packaging. You get a two inch connection. It comes with the ABS and the PVC flange, depending on which part Straight, of the country yeah. you're in. Right. That, and that is connected to your two inch. So it's still a simple plumbing connection, one solvent connection, but what really makes that work is because the drain outlet is so much smaller. If you end up with plumbing that is slightly off center, maybe there's a girder or something mechanical in the way, or if it's in a slab and it's poured and locked in place and you can't move it, because this drain is cut to fit, you can actually offset the opening, the drain outlet, so and cut it. This drain and that drain outlet, or that connection to your PVC, are separate. They're two different pieces. And we actually have it right here. It's a little difficult to see because the curdy is already attached. Sure. But, but this, this, this port, is your flange This here. flange is right here, and this is the actual outlet that's built into that. And so that allows you, because it's so small, it can shift. Depends on the size of the shower, but if this was a four foot shower, that drain, that outlet could be three foot off center and right. you buy an eight foot drain and do an extreme offset cut. Right. And visually, nobody knows that the plumbing was off center so sure. far. It allows you to have that, it looks sleek and clean and the plumbing could be I massively I, differently I, located. And I think that's a huge, I mean, you're, you're kind of foolproofing this in a way where it's, if that plumbing's slightly off or if there's a joist in the way, you're not moving that joist, you have that flexibility. Right, we don't have to get into framing, engineering. We don't have to have any other trades come back and move products in the floor yeah. that are in the way. It's just simple, just buy the appropriate size drain and cut it to fit. If we were to think about it in, in terms of you know, the layers, rather than being part of your waterproofing layer, your waterproofing layer is the curdy with the flange, and this here is just your finish. It's, yeah, basically. It's, a, it's another tile. Basically, that just it's happened. a tile, exactly. Yeah, and, it, and it happens to allow the water to Absolutely. flow through it. What, I mean, what a great, you know, opportunity to, to, you know, make this a simpler install, especially so far down the line. The, the one other thing I noticed is that it's narrower. Yeah, it's much sleeker. Why, why is that? It gives you just a lower profile. Sometimes people don't want to see the plumbing features, right? right. They want the beauty of the tile to shine and that's, right. they just want that yeah. to hide. So that's just a more modern, clean look. So can I take a guess that in the future, this will be a tileable cover? You know, so you never know what the future holds. I hope so. <laughs> so last thing is this Dietra that is peel and stick. Everything we do is thin set in, it's permanent. Right. You know, peel and stick, that sounds temporary to me. It sounds like it's not going to last. It sounds like a, an easy cop-out way to do it. Absolutely. It, it, 
now I don't need to be a professional tile installer anyway. Like, right. So I, I'm I'm throwing objections at okay. you. Okay. Show, explain to me what and why this product is. Well, in all fairness, when I saw the product the first time, I had those same objections. But now as you a, don't. As a tile contractor, I lived in the mud and thinset world, sure. right? And that was what I assumed was permanent and forever. Yep. After using it a couple times, it changed my opinion. So, is the other product going to go away? No. The peel and stick version of this, so that's a pressure sensitive. Sure. So it still has to be weighted and rubbed in just like the existing because we need to force it into the subfloor. The big advantage just right off the top is more square feet an hour of prep. In the tile business, in the tile game, and in the building industry, getting it finished makes the most sense, right? Sure. So this allows you to do the prep work much faster. And, and as it says there, it's immediately ready for tile. Right. It's, it's the second it's down and you have installed or laced the cable in and done your testing, or if there's any type of inspection you have to have done, as soon as all that's taken care of, it's ready for tile. So technically it could be done in one day. Is there any difference in terms of the subfloor prep in terms of what would get thin set down versus what is peel and stick That's down? a great question. So we do offer a primer, an acrylic primer, and it's a fast drying, depending on the temperature, it's about a 20 to 60 minute dry time. So it really doesn't, it, stumble the job that, at all. Is the primer required at all times? It's not, it's not a requirement. It's one of those deals that it's highly recommended and especially recommended if you worry about the bond or the stick. So if there was, in a remodel instance, if there was any type of old adhesives, right? Or maybe there was an old thin set that you sanded down and there's just a slight layer. When we go over a wooden subfloor, whether it's a plywood or an OSB from whatever brand, there's always there's glues and chemicals in there, right? So it's good to seal over those as well. And then even in the concrete world, a freshly poured concrete slab is really porous and thirsty, right? Yeah. So it can dry the thin set out so fast. Right. But with this scenario, you can actually prime that, wait about 20 or 30 minutes, and then walk right back on it and do the peel and stick. Another beauty thing is with this is on the seams, it's always been important to line the lugs up so that the wire doesn't have a jog. Well, until you have pressed the peel and stick in, you can peel it up and reposition it. Oh, interesting. It's not like a uh, self-adhesive contact sure. cement that's stuck the second it goes down. So you could lay your sheets out yeah. and realize that I have a slight offset that's going to make my wires jog and pick them all back up and then you do your roller or your roll down. Now, are these sold in sheets or roll? Both. Okay. So just like our traditional Dietra heat, it's sold in our sheets and in our rolls and it also comes in both our regular Dietra heat membrane, which has the white backing. So this would be for a wooden subfloor. And then our Dietra heat duo, which has the thermal break and also some sound isolation properties, if it'll come out of the packaging, with that gray fleece. So the easy way to remember this is white for wood, gray for concrete, because that's what color concrete is. Got it. When are we making the decision to use this over a thin set application? So if it's a small application and maybe like a Jack and Jill bathroom only in a few square feet, there's really no winner on either side of the coin, right? Do I have one in stock? Do I need to get the other? Who, what does my manufacturer or my supplier have one in stock? Yeah. Doesn't make a huge difference. But when you get into some areas that are larger square footage, maybe you're doing a whole basement or a whole level or a large kitchen, then you're picking up time that yeah. gets the time onto the tile installation well, side. Well, uh, Kelby, I would probably argue even on the Jack and Jill where it's, if I can go in there and set this and tile it and I'm not yes. setting this and you know, I have guys that will set a, you know, prep a bathroom, leave, yeah. they'll go to another job and come back the next day when it's dry. This, this keeps them on exactly. The it is faster. And with me having used this now and yeah. experiencing it, I personally would use this on all of them just because of the ease of use. Yeah. The nice thing too is if you have a crew with multiple uh, employees, one person can do the prep work and they need a paint roller and a utility knife, sure. basically. They don't have to bring mixing buckets and drills and thin set. Yeah. So you could send a person or two out to do prep work ahead of the tile installer, and they could get all the prep work done in just a few hours with the minimal amount of tools. As you're talking, I'm, re like, I'm realizing where, you know, um, is it decoupling or uncoupling? Uncoupling. Uncoupling. Re like that, where that stemmed from. And, we, yes. and I think we, we had a conversation before about way back in like the pyramids. Right. Where they had that sand layer. Yeah, sand strata. And you know, and as I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking about how important this is to bond to the subfloor. The reality is, is that bonding to the subfloor, there's still movement between the tile and the subfloor, and that's where that that that, that yeah, that movement really that movement's happening inside the air channels or the air gaps yeah. because those can distort. 
the fleece is not only giving you the bond to the subfloor, but it's also keeping in a thin set application, it's keeping the thin set from filling those air pockets right. up, which would then not make but the I'm, uncoupling membrane not work. But if you're, you're bonding to the subfloor right. in any manner, exactly. right? And, and this is just a faster manner, Much faster. allowing you to, to work quickly, allowing to, to prevent the, the back and forth at multiple visits, but your, your, your tile bond hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. It's still a thin set application. It's still fully supporting and bonding the tile down, and it's still taking care and making that whatever grade of tile you work last as long as you want it to. I always say that a properly installed tile job should ugly out long before it wears out. We should be sick of the look before it fails. Kelby, thank you so much. Absolutely, Nick. Really exciting to see this. Those are the three products that have been shared here at the International Builder Show. We'll have a link in the description for more information. Thanks for watching.